Welcome back to my channel folks and today we're returning to the series of movies that never came to be. Today I'm going to be exploring Hellraiser Origins. If you're not familiar with this, take a look at this tiny little teaser. So this was a project which sadly never got off the ground, and there's really not that much information out there about it. However, I managed to get my hands on a PDF pitch, basically, for the film. It outlines everything. It has the pitch, the synopsis, uh, has character breakdowns, everything. This was supposedly to go to studios and get them excited on, uh, on the project. So I'm going to run through that today and hopefully give you an insight into this movie, which unfortunately we will unlikely ever see. Just as a side note for my own thoughts and to kind of get you excited, this, I believe, is how to do a reboot. If you are ever going to be rebooting Hellraiser, this is how you do it. This is absolutely fantastic. Genuinely, the imagination that's gone behind this is superb. Sadly, a bit on the expensive side and will probably never ever happen. So, anyway, let's get into it. In the beginning, there was darkness. Before there was man, before any life, there was hell. And that's how we start off this, uh, this PDF journey. In terms of the initial pitch, it's touted as a blood-soaked epic set in a world of sex, magic, and esoterica. This is the nightmarish tale of the rise and fall of the Cenobite Kingdom, a vast empire where gods and beasts coexist amongst corridors of ancient citadels, a creation myth where pain and suffering are fast becoming spiritual currency, where deception and vengeance are tools used to forge the first tribe of man. War approaches under the banner of Leviathan, so too does the birth of Hell. So if that doesn't whet your appetite, then I have absolutely no idea. The outline for this movie, or this pitch anyway, is a world before man, before the birth of human civilization, the time of the first Cenobites. The last of the gods walked a scorched earth. The presence of the oldest god sends any predecessor into an ecstatic, pleasure-infused rage. In the depths of a labyrinth void, the lesser gods gathered. No longer able to contain their insatiable appetite, they turn on the last of the old ones, tearing it limb from limb, an orgy of flesh for the masses, fornicating with slabs of meat ripped from its bones to oblivion. An engineer escapes with a single piece of his master, the heart of the old one. And we continue. This is a world of primeval blood and sex magic. One man, a high priest of the largest of the citadels, resists all temptations. Through self-mutilation and meditation, by inserting thin shards of metal into chakra points, he resists the pull. A spiritual journey given to him by the gods. A brief encounter with the heart of the oldest one long before it's hidden in a living bull sphinx. When Pinhead calls into question his faith in his gods, sinister events set in motion a catastrophic myriad of torture, execution, and revelation. Political machinations that force the high priest to wage a holy war. Under the banner of a false god, he tricks the first tribe of man to rise against their creators, seeking to steal God's fire in his quest for spiritual redemption. If he succeeds, Earth's suffering shall be legendary. This is Hellraiser Origins. So again, just to bud in and give you my thoughts, you can see how, yes, we've got the same characters, yes, we've got the same world, but a vastly different take. This is something that genuinely would breathe so much new life 
into the franchise. And it's such a shame that no one went for it. And again, I understand why it would have been hugely expensive. So in terms of the synopsis breakdown, we have a prologue, which is very short. It's just one line and it is, God is sacrificed on the altar in front of a chanting tribe of thousands. And then the main synopsis, Pinhead is High Priest, a spiritual liaison between man and creator in a time when they walked the earth together. Lately, Pinhead has suffered a crisis of faith and begun inwardly to question his God. However, unbeknown to him, members of Pinhead's order have developed similar misgivings about his privileged status. Pinhead's spiritual mentor arrives from the temple of the God King for the Harvest Collection. Telepathically sensing Pinhead's troubled state of mind, she seeks to reassure him. Meanwhile, an emissary to the God King strikes a treacherous bargain with two members of Pinhead's order. Part of the harvest includes human sacrifice. Pinhead's daughter is now chosen. Surely a mistake. Only men of a certain age are deemed capable for such worthiness. Seizing their moment, the traitors incite the congregation to riot. The daughter is sacrificed before there can be any debate. Her mother is caught in the melee and killed by the same sacrificial blade, a dagger called the Chris. Pinhead from here seeks revenge in his unique blend of charm, eloquence, and rage. He discovers a chain of murderous deceit leading all the way to the God King himself. During the torture of the traitors, the mysterious seed of Leviathan is revealed, a relic with the power to resurrect his family from the sacrificial Chris that holds their spirits. Pinhead exits the citadel with a warrior cast to find this relic. The traitors revealed X, a known bandit leader, as their source to the whereabouts of this magic charm. Meanwhile, the emissary has received word of the traitors' deaths and he leads an army of beasts charging off after Pinhead. From here, Pinhead's company are ambushed by outlaws and taken captive. Executing their prisoners one by one, the bandit leader discovers Pinhead's identity and decides that he should live. He will command a hefty ransom. This bandit turns out to be the aforementioned X. The emissary's horde storm the stronghold, dispatching all with extreme prejudice. Pinhead gambles his life to save that of X in a David and Goliath style encounter. He triumphs over the emissary and this spectacle elevates him into a folklore legend. Using this as a platform, Pinhead unites the nations of man. He invents a false religion to inspire valour in hearts of this army. Under the banner of Leviathan, they march to war. Tactically, they hide behind an illusion of feudalism, which seemingly explodes into civil war. Alarmed at the scale of the unrest, the God King's horde are sent to police the crisis spots. The spiritual mentor then discovers Pinhead's involvement and seeks peace talks. At the temple, Pinhead is given clear warning that rival gods are using him for their own evil gain. We now learn that the God King did in fact die long ago before the creation of the Cenobites and of the heretical shame of the Masters, that they were tricked into murder by sinister influence. It is also explained now that the Chris cannot resume the dead only the flesh. Soaked in rage and paranoia, he rejects peace and kills his mentor, signalling the inevitable act of war. Pinhead's army launch a full-scale assault on the temple's weakened defences. Pinhead triumphs from within. He locates the corpse of the God King and carves the relic from its fossilised chest. At last, the seed of Leviathan is his. The freed relic, together with the massive sacrifice of global war, signals the appearance of the God King's rival. The Deviant King has awoken from eternal slumber, slithering up from its spirit womb and into the world of men. The Deviant God reveals to Pinhead that the God's temple is actually a machine called the Leviathan, a detention unit that aligns its geometry to slide open and shut a labyrinth of doors across dimension. The Deviant is its prisoner, and the God King, it seems, was her jailer. 
The engineer cannot escape of her own will. Runes prevent her from picking up the relic, which is the key to this cell. Yet, it seems she has found a workaround in manipulating the desires of others to get what she wants. Pinhead is now the final piece in her bid for freedom and she strikes a bargain that will see Pinhead retrieve his family. Pinhead, naturally, is wary, but the Deviant issues the threat of mass extinction if he does not comply. Pinhead places the relic into the Leviathan and its huge structure rumbles and shifts as it generates the unlock sequence. Pleased, the Deviant resumes the spirits from the Chris but as the mentor predicted, they are simply reanimated lumps of flesh. She laughs, mocking Pinhead's disappointment, using an exact coin of phrase that reveals her to have been the emissary in Avatar form all along. Pinhead, enraged at the trickery, forsakes the bargain, he jams the Chris into the relic and its shifting geometry of Leviathan, breaking the sword, crippling the coordinate system and forcing a safety shutdown in the mechanism. Leviathan roars with rage and unleashes an unholy deluge of Armageddon. The old world is swallowed up by waves, riddled with all manner of foul, unspeakable, inescapable horror. All life is wiped from the earth, as Pinhead, the Deviant, and the spirits of the Chris are sucked into the gem, trapping them all in the collapsed portal configuration, like genies sealed up tight within the seed of the Leviathan. As the relic is sucked down into the swirl of the collapsing tower amongst the ocean horrors and screaming souls of species apocalypse, a winged serpent bursts from the ocean, flying up through the chaos of this epic temple collapse, screeching defiantly. Clutched in its talons is the seed of Leviathan. Epilogue Le Marchand, in his quest to find a rare section for his uniquely commissioned puzzle box, stumbles upon the Seed of Leviathan, quite by chance amongst the collections of some wretched peasant peddling his trinkets and wares. Here, in this dry, forgotten corner of the earth, the peasant stares up at Le Marchand. What is your pleasure, sir? End. And there you have it. That is Hellraiser Origins. That is everything that we know of what the movie could have been like. There is no clear structure to a script here. As far as I'm aware, there is no script. This is as close as we can get to a script treatment, as far as I'm aware. I do have several pages of artwork outlining very specific details for characters. Essentially character Wikipedia pages, I guess you could say. I will do some future videos on this because I do feel that you guys would genuinely really, really like it. There's some information on the new Leviathan, the Void. Uh, there's an overview. Again, lots and lots of bits and pieces here. Who was supposed to work on it? Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's... For me, I love it. The artwork especially is absolutely superb. This definitely is not going to be for everyone. But for me, I think this is a great way to breathe new life into the franchise. It's different enough, but it's also its own thing. Uh, and quite similar at the same time. So guys, I want to hear your thoughts. What do you think about Hellraiser Origins? If you enjoyed this, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of this, the series where I explore movies and scripts and things like that from cancelled projects and also just reworked projects to have a good comparison. So that being said, that wraps it up here for me. If you don't already, please do follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. H Reviews. If you want to support the channel and what I do here, head on over to my Patreon page via the link in the description box. As always, I've been Mr. H. Take care.